Circling trees, kissing the breeze, maneuvers made with such an ease. Dive down low, rise up high, tiny drone, conquer the sky. Welcome to the second part of the XI-20 build video. Now we start with the most interesting part, assembling the drone. It is very important to choose the appropriate length of screws. If they are too long, they can damage the engine. We screwed in all four motors and check if they turn freely. Now we come to the fun part, it's time to mount the AIO flight controller. With it, you also get an example of connecting the basic components. A flight controller is the brain of a drone, responsible for processing sensor data and executing precise commands to maintain stable flight. It interprets inputs from the pilot, adjusting motor speeds in real time based on feedback from onboard gyroscopes and accelerometers. As the central hub of a drone's operations, the flight controller plays a critical role in ensuring responsiveness, stability, and safe flying experiences. This little thing is a capacitor. Capacitors for drones are electronic components that store and release electrical energy, helping to smooth out voltage spikes and protect sensitive electronics. They are especially crucial in FPV drones, ensuring consistent power delivery to the motors and preventing video interference. Ideally, capacitors should be soldered as close as possible to the power pads. A shock absorber ball for flight controllers is a small, usually rubberized or silicon component used to isolate the flight controller from vibrations and jolts generated by the drone's motors and movements. By mounting the flight controller on these balls, it ensures more accurate sensor readings and better overall flight performance. And we start connecting components with FC. The first are engines. Take care not to cut off too much so that you won't be able to solder them. Motors for drones are the powerful electric units responsible for creating the thrust needed for flight by spinning the attached propellers. They come in different sizes and specifications tailored to the drone's intended use, from agile racing quads to stable aerial photography platforms. The efficiency, torque, and speed of a drone largely depend on its motor characteristics and proper pairing with appropriate propellers. Now we apply a small amount of tin to the wires, applying a small amount of solder, tinning, to the wires prepares them for a stronger and more conductive connection when soldering to other components. Tinning also prevents wire strands from fraying and ensures a clean, efficient soldering process. Using a flux pen during soldering helps clean the surfaces being joined, ensuring a better and more reliable connection. Flux also promotes the smooth flow of solder, preventing oxidation and reducing the chances of cold or weak solder joints. Place the tinned wire end onto the tinned FC pad and briefly reheat with the soldering iron until both solder applications melt together, forming a strong, shiny bond. The next component is the receiver. A receiver is an electronic device that intercepts and decodes signals sent from a remote transmitter, translating them into commands for the drone's flight controller. It allows pilots to control the drone's direction, speed, altitude, and other functionalities from a distance. Receivers must be compatible with the chosen transmitter's protocol and frequency for effective and accurate communication between pilot and drone. To wire a TBS Nano receiver to your flight controller, first identify the necessary pads or pins on both the receiver and flight controller, typically labeled as GND, ground, 5 volts, power, and RX slash DX, data. Connect the GND from the receiver to a ground pad on the flight controller, the 5 volts to a 5 volts pad, and the RX of the receiver to the TXUR pad on the flight controller, and vice versa for TX. Now it's VTX's turn. VTX stands for Video Transmitter, a crucial component in FPV, first-person view, 
drones that broadcasts the live video feed from the drone's onboard camera. This transmitter sends the video signal to a corresponding receiver, typically found on FPV goggles or a ground station monitor, allowing the pilot to see in real time from the drone's perspective. The power output, frequency, and channel of the VTX can often be adjusted to optimize video quality and minimize interference with other pilots or devices. Now we will use the multimeter. Using a multimeter to detect short circuits in a drone helps ensure the safety and functionality of the drone's electronics before powering it up. Short circuits can lead to permanent damage to components, battery fires, or erratic behavior during flight. By proactively checking for continuity and potential shorts with a multimeter, pilots can address issues during the build or repair process, preventing costly or dangerous outcomes. Now we mount the antenna holder. And of course the antenna. Last but not least mounting the XD30 connector. The XD30 connector is a type of power connector designed for high current electrical applications, especially popular in the RC, radio control, and drone hobbyist communities. Smaller and lighter than its counterpart, the XD60, the XD30 is suitable for smaller drones or RC vehicles where weight and space are concerns. Its gold-plated connectors ensure efficient power transfer and minimize voltage drop, while its design prevents incorrect polarity connections. When we have finished connecting the components, we move on to fixing the receiver's antenna. For that, we use one PVC string and a heat shrinkable tube. It remains to screw the remaining parts and our little pad is assembled. The next step is to connect to the computer and set up the software. We will cover that part in the next video. When connecting the battery for the first time, we suggest using a smoke stopper. Thank you for tuning in and spending your time with us. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again soon.